I'll start it off. Uh, first, thanks. I want to thank uh, Reese Supply for setting these up. Uh, we look forward, obviously, to doing more of these in the future. And I want to thank all of you for joining us today. So happy Friday. At least I had to check this morning to make sure it really was Friday. I've kind of lost track of time. But anyway, first, I'll introduce myself. My name is Paul Grams. I'm the National Sales Manager for Signage for GE Current, and I currently reside in Buffalo, New York. Uh, I'll also, we also have with us today, Natalie Pico, and I'll let Natalie introduce herself. Sure thing. I'm a global product manager for a signage category here at GE Current. I've been with GE for about uh, six years or so, and I am located in Montreal. Also, I have been told that I've got some feedback on my mic, so I apologize if it's a little bit hard to hear. Um, we'll do the best that we can. It sounds good, Natalie. It just sounds like you're, uh, you're kind of echoing a little bit. It's, it's not bad. Okay, uh, you might as well go. I'll make you go to the next slide. Okay, on the docket today, um, what we wanted to do is kind of talk a little bit of how to save time and money when lighting a sign. Uh, basically, we're going to be talking about our Tetra 24 volt platform, and it's really centered around uh, using fewer power supplies, fewer LEDs, less labor. And then we're going to show you some slides. Natalie's going to go through some things that, that talk about how to identify which LEDs that uh, keep more money in your pocket. So uh, basically, we want to help reduce overall cost, uh, get you kind of away from the mindset, kind of explain why we want to kind of get away from the mindset of what's a cost per module, what's the cost per foot, and really look at how much does it cost uh, to build the sign and what is the overall cost of the sign. And we'll show you some examples of that. Uh, and how our Tetra 24 volt system um, saves you money. Okay, we'll move it over. Natalie, I'm gonna kind of turn it right over to you here on the 12 volt, the 24 volt uh, platform. Yeah, sure thing. So um, as Paul said, we wanna do something a little different today. I mean, obviously we're gonna talk about Tetra cause that's what we're here to do, but also just give uh, a little bit of insight uh, if, you know, if you're someone on a shop floor and you've got cut sheet of two different LED systems in your hands, what to look for on the cut sheet that can help you make the decisions of what product you think might work the best in your application, right? So, uh, like a couple of tri tricks of the trade coming down at the end of the presentation here. Uh, but to kick it off, so the first thing that you can do in order to help save money and time, which means labor, is look at a 12 volt versus a 24 volt system, right? So if you're looking at those two different systems, a 24 volt system will always beat out a 12 volt system, everything else being equal, right? Uh, in terms of loading. This is particularly important in larger signs or larger projects, right? If you have a small letter set, it might be about the same, but anything like medium to larger, you're always gonna win with a 24 volt system, no matter whose it is, right? The reason this is, is because of the class two limitations, right? So class two is a, is a system, I'm sure you guys are, are familiar with it, but it was basically put in place for safety reasons to make sure people didn't you know, shock themselves, hurt themselves as they were installing things. So it limits the amount of current you can have in these power supplies, right? So on a 12 volt system, it has a, a maximum current of five amps, which means you can only go up to 60 watts on one power supply uh, or at least one channel. On a 24 volt system, the max current is four amps, which means you can go all the way to 100 watts, right? So this means you have a 60% increase in the available watts to use to load modules. So independent of what 24 volt system, you will win in terms of loading when you have a 24 volt system over a 12 volt. So this saves you labor, right? And it saves you material. You don't have to buy as many power supplies. So I'm gonna give an example of this. So we're gonna do a head to head. Um, because this is particularly efficient in larger applications, I decided to look at a box, right? So we're gonna do a head to head of sticks because it's an easy thing to put in a box. Uh, we're gonna do our Tetra stick versus a popular 12 volt system. Before we get too far into the analysis, I'm just gonna introduce our Tetra stick a little bit for those who are perhaps less familiar. So basically what we've done with our Tetra stick is we've taken our PowerMax or our PowerMax HO modules, the channel letter modules, and put them on a stick for ease of um, installation, right? It's easier for you to use. This is a great uh, product. The main thing that is really useful with this one is the loading, right? As most 24 volt systems are. The force on the PowerMax stick 
if you're looking at an eight foot stick, just to pick one so that we can look at it, right, rather than talking in uh, abstracts, you can load four sticks on one power supply, right? And then for the PowerMax HO, you can do three. So that's excellent loading, right? You don't have to do one stick per power supply or anything else like that. It's, it's a really great product there, uh, very efficient. And in terms of the spacing, if you look on that chart on the right, it might be a little bit hard to read, right? But this is from the face or from the, uh, from the stick to the face, right? So the distance from the face, you can go up to 18 inches if you're looking at the HO version of the stick, which is nice, right? You can do 12, uh, 12 inch centers. So that's just briefly what our stick is. So you know what we're using in the comparison. And you will see a comparison with the two sticks, the PowerMax version and the PowerMax HO version. As I go to the next slide here, uh, the graph you're, the, or the slide you're going to see after this, you're going to see two graphs. And it's going to be a little bit engineering y, and I couldn't help myself. So I'm going to explain a little bit here what you're going to be looking at so it doesn't just look like gobbledygook. Uh, basically, you're going to see a price comparison or a cost comparison, I should say, on Tetra Stick versus a 12 volt system. Uh, the graph you're going to be seeing on the left will be if everything is the same price. Right, so I'm just picking random numbers here. The 12 volt system stick is one buck, and the power supplies are a buck, and our stick is a buck, and power supplies are a buck. Right, so everything is the exact same price. The one you're going to see on the right is the one where our product, the Tetra stick, is 50% more expensive. Right, so you're paying 50% more on price per foot, 50% more on power supplies to show what the total cost of ownership of the sign is. I think that's important because sometimes we see those scenarios. And just FYI, right, uh, we're looking at 10 eight foot sticks in this comparison. We've also included a labor calculation. And the assumption that we've made there, just sort of rule of thumb, is okay, it's going to cost 10 bucks of someone's time to mount a power supply, just so you know what you're looking at. All right. So if we start with the graph where everything is the same price. So a buck is a buck is a buck, a stick is the same cost, power supply is the same cost, et cetera. I've broken down this chart into three different sections. The bottom darker yellow section is the actual stick cost, right? Just how many, how much money are you spending on a buying all the sticks? The light yellow is the power supplies. So depending on the loading, you're going to have to buy more or less power supplies. So how much money you have to lay down for that. And then the black part at the top is the labor. So based on how many power supplies you have, if it's 10 bucks power supply, it's going to be eh, this much in labor, roughly, right? So the first in the graph on the, sorry, on the left-hand side there still, the first two columns are the Tetra stick. And that last column there is the 12 volt system, right? So you can see that in certain cases for the power max module, which is the one all the way to the left, it's almost half is as expensive as the 12 volt system. And the primary driver here is you can see that light yellow column is huge. It's basically the drivers, the number of drivers you have to buy in order to install this system, right? So sometimes that's a bit of a hidden cost and you just look at price per foot of a stick and say, this one's less expensive, I'm gonna go with this one. Don't forget the drivers. If you're looking at a 12 volt system, that can be substantial. And again, Natalie, I'll just jump in real quick. And, and that's kind of what I said in the beginning, okay? We, we, we're trying to re-educate and, and kind of look at this from a different angle in regards to it's real easy just to get fixated on, hey, what's the price of the product per foot? How much is the power supply? Oh, uh, supplier A is more expensive than supplier B. We're going to go with supplier B. So, but what we're trying to, to kind of show you in this picture is you got to look at the entire system and why a 24 volt system makes more sense and puts more money in your pocket. Go ahead, Nancy. Yeah, that's exactly it. So now if we look at the right side, right, which I'm sure some people would argue is more like reality, um, where our products are slightly more expensive than the other. It's not always the case, but sometimes it is. Uh, you still win, right? If we're looking at that one. So you see down at the bottom there, that's your material cost. You can see it's slightly higher, right, on the Tetra products because it's 50% more expensive, right? That's what we've put in the analysis. But you are still saving overall because you're spending a lot more on power supplies, even at the increased cost, right, of ours. And labor, are you still spending a lot more on labor because there are just more power supplies to install. So 
it's not just a matter of dollars and cents and which is the product that I can get at the lowest price. You have to look at loading, you have to look at install time, number of power supplies, and then you know you can get the system that's actually the least expensive for you in your shop. Now, I'll throw one other thing in here, and, and Natalie and I kind of batted this around yesterday, in regard, and we didn't really uh, address it so much in this presentation, but uh, a kind of a bonus at the end of this thing in regards to the labor and the price of the product and, and all of that is energy savings. The 24-volt system does provide energy savings. Now, a lot of people will come back and say, well, I don't really care about energy savings or the customer really doesn't care about energy savings. Some do, some don't. It's kind of an added uh, bonus uh, in this whole uh, move from 12 to 24 volts. We have some additional tools. We won't really review them here, but your uh, regional sales manager in your area can certainly review that with you and provide you some tools that kind of goes through comparing a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system. You can input all your costs and all of that, and it'll actually throw out some detail to you to kind of uh, kind of give you another little uh, bonus to be able to give to a customer to kind of say, okay, not only is the overall cost of the sign less expensive to go to 24 volts and why you want to do it, but here's the added bonus of energy savings to you. And hopefully everybody uh, understands the value of energy savings, especially nowadays. You got it, Paul. So that's exactly it. Um, the, the energy savings, we haven't put them in that analysis to Paul's point, it's like a bonus, right? So that's that's always nice to have. So in this particular example, just to roll it all up, right, you, you're looking at upwards, depending on whether you're looking at our medium output stick or our high output stick, right, with the PowerMax or PowerMax HO modules on, you can get anywhere from like high 20s to high 50s percent cost discount on your system when you're using our 24 volt product right so it's definitely something to keep in mind so that's one way that you can save a little bit of time and money the next thing you can look at when you're evaluating a system to try to uh, populate your sign with the least amount of money possible is beam angles right so i'm going to talk about two things here in beam angles First is just uh, narrow versus wide, right? a general analysis, and then how to select the proper wide beam angle for your application. But let's start with just narrow versus wide. So how do you use fewer LEDs? You can use fewer LEDs uh, with a wider beam angle, right? So if you blast the light out wider to the side, uh, then you won't need as many LEDs to have a uniform, uniformly lit face, right? And this is particularly true in shallow applications where it, you can see a big difference in the performance of a wide versus narrow beam angle. If we take an example, in this, in this example, uh, we're going to pit ourselves versus ourselves, right? So we're going to look at our old 12-volt Tetra Max system versus our new 24-volt Tetra Max system. And the primary reason we're looking here is not necessarily 12-volt versus 24-volt. It's because they also had two different viewing angles. The older one was 150, uh, and the new one is 170. So if you look at this specific example, you can see just graphically, right, because of the wider beam angle of the 24 volt solution, you actually can reduce your stroke spacing. You can go from two strokes to one. Is this always going to be the case in every single letter set? Probably not, right? But you will certainly have uh, in specific letter sets the ability to reduce your stroke spacing, right? Um, the one thing we do here sometimes is, yeah, but, you know, the light output won't be the same, et cetera, et cetera, right? It may be the case. It depends on what system you're looking at, but there are solves for that, right? So maybe instead of using a max module, you use a power max module if you want to bump up the light output a little bit, or you condense the modules on the single stroke a little bit to get a little bit light, more light in there, but you're still going to be saving money, right? On this one, it's like, it's, it's less than half the modules you'll be putting in a sign. So you, even at that, even if you put a few ex, extra modules in there to help bump up the light output a little bit on the max, um, you're still going to be saving money and you'll still be saving time in terms of insulation, labor, all that sort of stuff. So that's definitely one thing to look for in a system is the beam angle wider versus less wide. So like a 150, something like this versus a 170. And yes, so that's it's, it's a matter of cost, right? So you have the product, half the cost. You have a little bit of a reduction in labor there. You can see the, the dark um, gray bar on the graph. It looks 
smaller in the 24 volt one to the left there of the graph. graph. So you do see a reduction in labor, but the primary cost savings you'll see there is the material cost savings. You just have to put so many fewer modules in there uh, that it's going to save you a lot of money up front. All right. So this is where the tricks of the trade, in my opinion, <laughs> portion starts, right? So not all wide beam angles are created equal. You can have a cut sheet uh, that says two different products, two different manufacturers, and not even two different manufacturers. It could be this two different products from the same manufacturer have 170 degree beam angles, right? And they are. They are 100. Both products have 170 degree beam angles. We're not saying somebody's pulling the wool over someone's eyes. They are legit 170 degree beam angle products. The trick is to how design the optic so that you optimize uniformity on the sign face. You can have, you need not only a wide beam angle, you also need a beam angle that shoots the right amount of light to the right place in order to have even distribution on the sign face. The reason this is, is because as the light shoots to the side more than the front, it actually bounces back into the sign more than goes through the sign face. So you need to send a lot more light out to the sides than you do if you're just sending something with a really uh, narrow beam angle that goes straight through the face sign, the sign, uh, yeah, the face of the sign. So you've got to be careful that you have a lot of light going out the side, otherwise, and more light than you have coming out the front, otherwise you will not get even distribution on the face. And that's why you see a lot of these bat wing optic graphs on people's cut sheets. I included the one here for Adam, which is perhaps slightly more complicated than it needs to be to explain, to show what I'm, what I'm talking about here, because on our new Adam product, we have two different beam angles, one for side to side and one for um, the length of the module. That's why you see two little plots there, but it, it demonstrates the bat wing optic that one needs in order to have even distribution to the face. And so if I'm not an optical engineer and I'm sitting there staring at two cut sheets and I'm trying to decide which one to use and they both say 170 and they both have these little plots on them or maybe they don't have the plots on them and some people's cut sheets say 170, some people's cut sheets don't, right? How can I identify which LED module is the one that has the optical design of the optic to ensure that, you know, yes, it's a 170 degree beam angle, but it also has even distribution across the face. How can I figure that out? And the answer is multiple stroke spacing. So you can check on the cut sheet and verify what the multiple stroke spacing is listed as, right? And an example of this is what you see here. So these are two different systems. They're both 170 degree optics, right? The one on the left is a Tetra 170 degree optic, and the one on the right is an alternate 170 degree optic. They are both 170 degree systems, but you can see that the Tetra optic has done a better job at shooting more light out to the sides to ensure uniformity and even spread, right? So although they're both 170, you're gonna be able to put fewer, the stroke spacing is gonna be able to be wider on the Tetra product than it is on the alternate product. So uh, as an example of this, right, we've taken some data off cut sheets just to say, hey, these are what people are, are saying on the cut sheets. And here is an example of how you can use this multiple stroke spacing um, guideline to help guide you as to what product might have the best optic, right? So I've taken two different sets of products. One is meant to be used in smaller, narrow, uh, shallower applications, and one, you know, a little bit brighter, let's say normal size channel letter stuff. So the first three lines are the smaller things. Uh, the beam angle claimed on the cut sheets are, there's a variety of them, right? Ours we claim is 165, 140. Uh, some of our competitors claim 180, 140, or 150, right? And they are, they all probably are as claimed on the system. And it's just a matter of, how the optic was optimally designed to make sure that over that beam angle, things, the, the right amount of light shoots the side. So if you look at the meat and potato of this, it's really okay. So for the first one, multiple stroke spacing at two inch depth, Tetra Atom is five inches. That's what Tetra, that's what we do. Uh, the P-LED one is three inches and the Agilite is two and a half. 
right? So it just goes to show, okay, perhaps there's a little bit of optimizing to be done there on those optics to make sure that there's really the light spread, the light spreads properly over that whole, whatever the beam angle is of that product, right? And if we look at the next three, we got PowerMax, we got a quick mod module and uh, uh, the Hanley module there at the bottom. They're all 170 degree products, right? All, every single last one of them. But again, if you go to the bottom of the cut sheet or wherever on the cut sheet, it says multiple stroke spacing. You can see that the Tetram stroke spacing is 14 inches, whereas the other ones are 10. So again, just to say, not all 170 degree angles, beam angles are created equal. Probably this is telling me that with, you know, even without testing or anything like this, you can probably look at the cut sheet and just say, okay, most likely the Tetra one is more well designed in terms of the optics, the light shooting out where it needs to shoot out properly in order just to have uniform light across the face. And the other one's possibly less so, right? So as a lay person, that's a really good check in order to see what you can do. And, and again, I'll just add, and, and Natalie said it a bunch of times, not to be redundant, but uh, just because what they say on the cut sheet is not meaning that they're lying about what they're saying in terms of uh, what their view angle is. It's just how the optimization of that view angle is. So it, it is, as Nelly put it, it, it's a good way or a good uh, rule of thumb to be able to look at the stroke spacing so that you can determine which is best going to illuminate evenly that, that um, uh, sign face. Okay, so to bring it back to money, right, because that's what all businesses run off of, um, this is basically what it will cost you, right? So we have on the left a box populated with 24 volt Tetra Max modules with a 170 degree beam angle. And then we got a box on the right populated with an alternate 170 degree beam angle system. And you can see just graphically by the, the pictures there that you would have to put more in the one on the right, right? You just have to put them closer together. And just to let you know how we did this, like we didn't invent this. We went by the published uh, spacing guidelines on the cut sheets, right? So we took the alternate manufacturer's recommendation on how to use the product in this application and we stuck it in here. And this is what you get, right? So you can see you would have to put considerably more strokes in there, which means more product, more money up front, more labor on the back end, right? Possibly more power supplies, I don't know, depends on the system. And those are all things that you can look for when you're about to populate a system with some LEDs to try to figure out which one you're going to be able to do the job most efficiently with. In this particular example that I was showing previously, you end up saving about 47% on material and labor, right? So primarily on the material side, but again, you can see in the labor, uh, there, there is slightly more labor, obviously, since you would have to put more LED modules into this system. So that's the kind of comparison you can look at. Now, are they always gonna look like this? No. Um, so I invite you, if you're familiar with whatever LED manufacturer you typically use, right, I invite you to make that comparison. Look at the cut sheets, do some calculations. Hey, if I was to use those stroke spacing rules versus these stroke spacing rules over here, uh, how can we, how can we, you know, populate our sign with the least product possible uh, and the fewest power supplies possible so we can save time on labor and save money on material. And again, real quick, uh, Natalie, I just want to say uh, some of these examples we're giving is really based on maybe a new build sign. Uh, obviously, when you're looking at our 24 volt Tetra stick, um, it was originally designed to to go into retrofits. Well, when you're doing a retrofit, it's really 12 inches on center. It's not really you're not really going to be uh, eliminating sockets and all of those types of things. Uh, but even in a retrofit situation, you're going to uh, take advantage of the fact that it's a 24 volt system. You'll be putting less power supplies in. The key to a retrofit is you want to get into the box as quickly as possible and you want to get out as quickly as possible. So there's the advantage of a 24 volt system over any type of 12 volt system. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point, Paul. All right. So in summary, right, if you're looking to save yourself time and money when designing a sign or any kind of system, retrofit, whatever, uh, what are the handles that you have, the levers that you have to pull, right? You can put fewer power supplies, you can, you can put fewer LEDs, and a combination of those two things will mean that you will use less labor. So the points that we've discussed here today that I hope you found useful, 
is the two major things you can look for is one is a 24 volt system. At the worst case, you're going to end up even. At the best case, you'll have phenomenal savings and in wider beam angles, right? And how to look for a wide beam angle that will best suit your application. So not just a degree number on a, a page or somewhere, but actually go down and look into the multiple stroke spacing and see how this product performs in the application and you can make your decision that way. And again, uh, we didn't put it on here, but there's also additions of uh, energy savings as well. So really what we're going for is we're trying to, 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 to give you guys some tools that will allow you to go back to your customers, okay, all of our customers, and actually be more of a... Uh, a shop that can provide additional value to a customer instead of me me too i can make this and here's how much it costs here's some additional things that you can provide to them that bring more value to them and make you more valuable to the uh, to your customer 